Yeah, thanks for the introduction. My name is Tim Schäfer. I'm a PhD student at the Molecular Bioinformatics Group of Ina Koch at Goethe University of Frankfurt. And uh, this is a collaboration with the, the Senckenberg Institute of Pathology at uh, University Hospital Frankfurt. It's about a digital pathology project uh, about Hodgkin lymphoma. So let's first have a look at digital pathology. So the usual workflow for something like, um, like Hodgkin lymphoma at Senckenberg Institute is that uh, biopsies are taken from patients and then pathologists stain these and have a look at these images. They have a look at the uh, morphology of individual cells as well as the tissue morphology. And then based on this, they give a suggestion for treatment. And what we're doing in digital pathology is that we use a device known as a slide scanner to produce high resolution slides from these uh, glass slides from the microscope. And then you can use these slides for, for different tasks. For, uh, many people use them for, for teleconsultation, for getting a second opinion from another pathologist during diagnosis, or for educational purposes. We use them for digital image analysis. And um, let's first have a look at Hodgkin lymphoma, what it is. It is a, a malignancy of the lymphatic system, which was, which was uh, first described by Thomas Hodgkin. And like in leukemia, uh, in lymphoma, there is no solid tumor, but you get a distribution of, uh, of these uh, IHRS cells, which are typical for the disease in the tissue. And Hodgkin lymphoma is characterized by a complex tumor and microenvironment, and it's known that these uh, HRS cells uh, also actively shape this microenvironment and need it to survive. And here's an, here's an image um, which shows Point in here. Um, here's an image which uh, shows a very small part of a, of a whole slide image with uh, where you can see um, the cell nuclei of, uh, stained in blue of, and these are the cell nuclei of all the tumor microenvironment and then in red you can see these large cells here and these are the so-called HRS or Hodgkin Reed Sternberg cells and they are stained with a biological marker which is called CD30. It marks an, uh, it marks an activated lymphocytes in, you can, it's used for the diagnosis of various subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma, and we are interested here in these two, nodular sclerosis and mixed celerity type. But uh, it also marks activated lymphocytes in diseases like lymphadenitis, which is, a, no, which is not a tumor, but a, um, but a swelling of the lymph nodes caused by viral infections or whatever. So as I said, pathologists look at these images when they do the diagnosis, but um, they are only interested in very small parts of these images. They look at individual cells or zoom in quickly to a few regions. What they don't do is uh, that they um, provide a systematic analysis of these images. They often notice certain patterns and they asked us to, to provide a systematic analysis of these, of these very large images. So the goals of this project were to work on the full whole slide image and perform a systematic analysis of these uh, CD30 positive cell properties, for example, cell sizes, cell shapes, and uh, also of the spatial distribution of these cells in the tissue. And in the long term, we are interested in finding out how these cells uh, spread through an individual lymph node and also through the whole lymphatic system and we would like to find out more about the composition and the, um, of the cellular, of the um, tumor microenvironment. And in the end, it would be very cool if we could combine data from different projects um, that we're currently working on to build a model of the, uh, of the lymph node. So here's the data set we received from the Zenkenberg Institute. It was a collection of whole slide images. We selected 35 of these images. They are very large images in a pyramidal format. You can imagine it like Google Maps, where you can zoom out to see, a, to see a 2D cut through the whole lymph node, or you can zoom in to see the nuclei of individual cells. Um, these images can get quite large, and they are very heterogeneous. This is human data, so they are not, we're not taken at some defined time point. Here are three example images. The first is a lymphadenitis case. In this image, you ha we have uh, two tissue sections in front of a bright background, and you can s still he he see here, these are B-cell centers, so you can see um, still the structure of the lymph node. 
Then we have two lymphoma cases here in the central one. Um, you can see the cells as only visible on this in this magnification as like a red fog, the CD30 positive cells. And here we have a case of nodular sclerosis. And for this case, it's, uh, for these uh, cases, it's typical that you have these uh, sclerotic bands here. So let's zoom in a bit on such an image. And this is what you will see, a distribution of CD30 positive cells in red in front of the tissue. And the first thing we wanted to do is to detect the positions of all these cells in these images. And for this, we developed a, we developed a software which we call Impro for Image Processing. It uh, uses the Java Advanced Imaging API to, um, to open these images and the open microscopy environment libraries. And then it, um, it, um, it is used to process many of these images on a computer cluster, and the work is done by standard software like Cell Profiler and ImageJ. It has a graphical user interface, but it's mostly for, for debugging and for checking the results, and we use a command file on a computer cluster. So what we do is we split these very large images here into many overlapping tiles, and we do this on all the layers. And then we distribute the tiles to a computer cluster. We have cell profile, a cell profiler uh, pipeline running on this cluster. We, all these nodes write to a central database. And then in the end, our software can access this database to get the cell distribution for the whole, uh, for the whole slide image. So let's have a short look at the image detection pipeline. Um, it's a rather classical pipeline. So the images, as you can see here, contain uh, one or more tissue patches and lots of background. We're only interested in the tissue area. So we use the, the lowest resolution image to detect this based on simple descriptors like intensity. This is enough in this case and to reduce the data. And once we have this, here is a small part of such an image tile. This is the input image. Then we perform color deconvolution based on uh, the method uh, by Rufrog et al. And what you then get is, uh, is in this case, the CD30 channel we're interested in. We then use a classical segmentation and region growing for object detections. And on these object detections, we compute shape descriptors. Then we filter the resulting objects. Uh, th so the small ones here in red, they, are, they uh, get filtered out. And then in the end, you get a result like this. We also validated this pipeline. So for a selection of randomly chosen tiles, we um, performed a manual annotation of the cells in this image, and we compared it with the results from our software. We computed sensitivity and precision, and both of these were quite good for the overall images, I think 0 0.85, 0 0.95. And, but um, if you look at the results for, uh, for, all the, for all the small tiles, then we were interested in also having a look at the tiles, at some of the tiles where the cell detection didn't work so well. And in whole slide images, you always have, uh, you, always, uh, you can always be surprised by what's in there. So um, these are some of the, some very common examples. Here you have blood vessels, which, are, which lie between the cells. Here you have very high cell density, which makes it hard to, uh, to distinguish individual cells and makes it even for humans, it's not possible anymore to determine the size of a single cell, uh, the shape of a single cell. And in this case, you have uh, stain residues and also broken and folded over tissue. And in this case, we have some artifacts from the, um, from the scanning process where these cells are duplicated here. But you can also find uh, lots of other funny things. We've had images where pathologists had written some, uh, some comments on the slide or something. You can find lots of uh, interesting stuff on these. So yeah, once we have the, this uh, cell distribution, the question was um, how to model it. And we used a concept known as unit disk graphs. So each cell becomes a vertex of a graph. And then we use a distance threshold, which was suggested by pathologists. It should be, be around 10 cell diameters. And uh, the intention is to model the communication of cells with their surroundings, for example, by cytokines. And if you do, uh, if you, then we connect all cells within this distance threshold with an edge. And if you do this for all edges here, you get a graph like this. And if you do this for all cells, which we've detected here, then you get a graph like this. And these graphs are also very heterogeneous. In some images, there are like 500 CD30 positive cells. In some images, there are like 90,000. 
And these graphs then get up to 7 million edges. And you can see some clustering here. The question was, is there, is there clustering? Are there typical patterns? But at first, we have to ask ourselves whether this graph contains any information at all. It could be random. So we have to ask, what would a random unit disk graph look like? And how do the properties of our graph differ from these random graphs? So we constructed this null model. For each of these images, we measured the tissue area and the number of cells in the image. And then we distribute the same number of uh, cells on a tissue of equivalent uh, area. And this is, if you do this, you can do this with a, with a Poisson point process. So each position of the new cells is um, equally probable, and the locations of the existing cells do not influence the um, these of new cells. And uh, let's have a look at the vertex degree distributions of this graph. Here's uh, on the x-axis is the vertex degree, and on the y-axis is the share of vertices with a certain degree. This is the degree distribution of the of the Poisson of the uh, of the Poisson distribution. So in this case, we have an image where the average vertex degree was around 11, and this is then the resulting Poisson distribution. You can see the theoretical one with the dotted line, and then our implementation uh, with the arrow bars. And if you compare this to the measured cell graph, then you can see that the Poisson distribution does not um, does not fit to model uh, is not very well suited to model this uh, distribution. We tried some other distributions, and we found that the gamma distribution can, in many cases, be used to to model the vertex degrees of these graphs. And what you can also see is that the CD30 positive cells cluster in the tissue. The vertex degree is shifted considerably to the, to the right in this case. And this is also, this is a nodular sclerosis case. These cases uh, always have pronounced clustering, but it's also true for, uh, for the other images. And we performed analysis of these cell graphs. We've compared the vertex degree distributions and also the stuff like clustering coefficient for the different diseases for lymph adenitis for, and for the two subtypes of Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular sclerosis and the mixed celerity type. And it turned out that there, is a, that there are significant differences in the amount of clustering between these, uh, these disease subtypes. And we are working on extending this analysis to have a look at more graph properties and to integrate more data into, this gra into these graphs, to use more data from it. You can see here the color of the cells um, repre um, represents the morphological properties. And this is at this time not considered. And we'd also like to add additional biomarkers. So we have uh, not only the CD30 positive cells, but also the cells of the tumor microenvironment. But yeah, we're still struggling with uh, getting, getting the proper data for this. And here's something else we are currently working on. It's an analysis of the, of the neighborhood. And what we did is in Hodgkin lymphoma, there are two, it's known that there are two separate, um, there, there are two separate groups of cells, um, small ones and large ones. The smaller ones are usually, um, usually have a single cell nucleus. And there's a population of larger cells, which are <coughs> multinucleated, sorry. And so we've assigned uh, each cell to a profile class, for example, small and round cells, large and round cells, small and elongated, and so on. And um, then we've looked for each cell uh, in, the, in these large images. We've looked at the next neighbor. And we computed whether, these, uh, whether you, we can see some patterns here, whether, for example, some cells uh, tend to favor or avoid certain other cell shapes. And you can see here clearly for nodular sclerosis that um, the small ones, the small round ones, uh, uh, are separate from all the other cells. And either they want to be separate or nobody likes them. We don't know. But um, we also looked at the, at the next neighbor distance. And it turned out that even though they are separate from all the other cells, um, they don't cluster together very much. But they are spread out in a, in a larger area, separate from all other cell shapes. So we think that these could be um, that this subpopulation could be responsible for um, for migrating in the tissue, and we are currently working on um, uh, on validating this with three data with the three D data and also with the time lapse data. Because of course, a small round cell in a two D image could be a, could be some other cell which is just cut in a way. We did this with many uh, many million cells. Yeah, so to summarize, um, we've implemented an imaging pipeline for cell detection and whole slide images. We've quantified cell and image properties like 
so size and so shape, so I have not shown, shown the C in detail. And uh, the images we had available were very large and very heterogeneous. And we've defined cell graphs to model the distribution of cells in the tissue and compared them with a null model. And it turned out that these uh, cell graphs were not random, that the, CD30 posi that the CD30 positive cells cluster in the tissue. And this clustering could be due to attraction, it could be due to cell divisions and the new cells don't move away, or it could be due to the lymph node structure. Um, we don't know yet. We found uh, that the vertex degree distribution can be modeled uh, by a gamma distribution, and the graphs also showed differences between the uh, disease types. So uh, I would like to thank IRB, the IRB group for providing me, uh, for paying for my uh, travel grant for ISMB. I would like to thank all members of the Molecular Bio, uh, Bioinformatics Group at Goethe University, and of course our collaborators, and especially Professor Martin Leo Hansmann at Senckenberg Institute of Pathology. And I would like to thank you for your attention.